What is up guys? We are back with another video and it is Ryzen 5000 series launch day, which means we get to tell you quite a lot more about the Ryzen 5000 series processors. Now, before we get started, I also have a video on the Ryzen 9 5900X. So if you wanna check that out, I will have that link below. But today we're checking out this processor, which is the Ryzen 5 5600X. So let's go ahead and take a look. The Ryzen 5 5600X is effectively replacing the Ryzen 5 3600X, which I called basically the best mid-range processor that you could buy at the time. This is a six core 12 thread part that has a base clock of 3.7 gigahertz and it's gonna boost up to 4.6 gigahertz. It has 32 megabytes of L3 cache and keeps the same 65 watt TDP. With the Ryzen 5000 series, we still have the same seven nanometer process and we still have the same AM4 socket. So what really is new? The new thing is the Zen 3 architecture. So from, you know, the Ryzen 3000 series was based on Zen 2 and now we're moving up to Zen 3. And Zen 3 was basically built from the ground up. And that's a really good thing because it allows AMD to really address certain issues they had with the 3000 series or certain things that they wanted to really improve. Now I go over all of this in either the 5900X video, if you guys wanna check that out, or the written reviews, which I will have the links uh, in the description. So you can check out all of the things that AMD really did to improve just, just on architecture on the 5000 series. Overclocking the 5000 series is pretty much the same as what you saw for the 3000 series. So if you're familiar with it, it's going to be pretty easy. You can go into your BIOS and do it. You can use the Ryzen Master software to do it. I would suggest if you're new to overclocking, just use the Ryzen Master software. It is very easy to use. We used it and we were able to get an all core overclock. So that's all six cores on this processor running at 4.8 gigahertz with a V core of 1.375 volts. I think that is pretty good considering we were using air cooling. And I feel like the 5000 series chips, you can push just a little bit harder than the 3000 series chips. Now it's time to get into testing. We of course tested these processors directly against their you know, the predecessors, as well as current Intel processors. And our test systems are more or less identical. The only things that are really different are, are of course the processors as well as the motherboards.
Back when the Ryzen 5 3600X launched, I said it was the best mid-range processor out there. It's what I recommended to a lot of people who were you know, in the market to build a new mid-range PC. It was that good. And even now, um, the 5600X, which effectively is replacing it, I think that is a, gonna be the new mid-range king, it is. Um, if we compare it directly to the, I, or the i5-10600K, um, it blows it out of the water in all of our tests. Um, CPU test, single core, multi-core beats it. It beats it in all of our gaming tests as well. And that was the big thing. That was the caveat with getting an AMD processor was that Intel still beat it at gaming. That was kind of what we saw. Even stuff like, like an 8700K would beat a lot of the 3000 series processors in gaming performance. Now that is kind of wiped away. Um, in our gaming test, this beat the 10600K in pretty much all of the tests which is really, really impressive. On top of that, just the performance increase generation over generation is really impressive from AMD. Um, on single core performance specifically, again, that's really what they worked on with the 5000 series. We saw anywhere from a 16 to a 19% performance increase in our single core test comparing the 3600X to the 5600X. So that in itself is very impressive. Multi-core performance, again, same thing, we saw, I believe, um, 12 to 17% increase in multi-core performance. So again, performance generation over generation is really good. And the really cool thing, you know, we, we move back to gaming because I think a lot of people, of course, are building PCs to, to game. Um, you know, just slotting this in, you know, uh, as opposed to a 3000 series chip, just the performance upgrade in games that you're going to get from moving to 3000 series to 5000 series is really impressive. We saw, you know, depending on the title, Borderlands is the outlier because it didn't really matter. Um, but in most titles, we saw anywhere from a 9 to 17% increase in gaming performance, which I think is really impressive. Um, just, you know, slotting in a new chip, I think that is really cool. And again, if you're moving from second generation Ryzen or first generation Ryzen, you'll see even more of an increase in gaming performance. So I really like that. Um, another thing I like about this processor is that it does come with a cooler. Um, it's, not the, it's not the prism, I know that, but it does come with a cooler. It does save you a few bucks if you are on a kind of tight budget and maybe you'll, you know, down the line, you might buy a CPU cooler, but it does save you some money that it does come with the cooler. Um, and overclocking, like I said, it's very easy. I felt that you were able to push this more than we were able to push the 3600X. Um, and the last thing we have to talk about really is platform. Platform, platform, platform. I talk about it all the time because still we don't have PCI Express uh, Gen 4, PCI Express 4.0 on Intel motherboards. It's not supported with the processor. Um, so you're not gonna get it. On B550 and X570, you are getting PCI Express 4.0. Mostly important for storage. You get super fast Gen 4 NVMe SSDs. That's something to consider when, of course, you're you know, choosing between Intel and AMD. So that's something that this, of course, processor has going for it as well. With the 5000 series, um, AMD has increased their pricing about 50 bucks per processor. So the 3600X launched at 249. This is 299. I still feel that that fits the mid range very well. I think for that 50 bucks, you're getting quite a lot. Single core performance, gaming performance, multi core performance, it's all been increased. It's all staying under that same 65 watt TDP. You still get the cooler. I think it is a great deal. And I think that this, again, is going to be the new mid range king processor just because it is that good. Now, if you have any questions about this processor, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. As always, I will have links below to our full written review as well as where you can go ahead and pick this up. Now, if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up and if you enjoy our tech content, go ahead and subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next video.